This is the uh, the office. It's where I do some vlogging on some other media. Um, and yeah, this is this is where it all goes down. Um, so uh, yeah, tonight's video I decided to go with the Kershaw I just got the uh, the Cryo Two Tonto Black Wash. And originally I was just going to do the video on that guy um, who took a little cutsies against some other knives that I, I, I had on display. And I was just like, you know what, I've done a, a, a decent enough lineup on some other knives. So I was like, let's let's do a competitive options video. Let's let's see what else out there is hardcore and just as durable so as So this is the, the like Cryo. I said in the, the opening, this is the Kershaw Cryo 2. Uh... No, this may just be the Cryo in Black Wash Tonto. Um, and we are also going to be looking at some competitive options for the Cryo. For a, a heavy duty knife. Um, and something a little hardcore. Something you want that you know will last forever that will just be a beast and just take torture and abuse and need some work outside of your everyday pocket knife and to my use these other three will be a good competitor especially in the durability um and some of them in price but that's gonna be uh if you want those, you can just check out the original videos. But, um, because everything on this desk should have an original video aside from the, the cryo. But, <laughs> harping from what I said when I did the unboxing, one of my biggest thing on the cryo was, is I was going to be like, I might be a little wimp and I might bitch out because of the weight. But, you know what? Carrying this, the weight wasn't a factor. Um, I might get another cryo because <laughs> I think I might like the drop point a little better. There, um, there was only one instance that I wasn't a big fan of this knife. Um, the one thing I do love is the, it's got an amazing spring on here for an assisted knife. I mean, this thing is just lightning fast. And then, like I said, I, I went ahead and threw a lanyard on there. Try and keep with the with the beastly looks, with the little skull and some little beadwork on there, and a very primitive uh, lanyard. But anyway, so this also might be an issue of just touching up the blade. It seemed pretty sharp out at a box, but I might need to touch it up because this recurve, though aesthetically nice I noticed there is a little bit of hang up here and I'm, I'm just wondering if it's just because the the edge needs to be touched up up here but um aside from that loving it good knife uh it is a little on the chunky side but it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be in pocket um it wasn't as heavy as I thought it would um in my instance it went in the pocket and I don't even know it's there but um, so yeah, that's, that's my quick overlook of the Kershaw Cryo. Again, I wish I could bring you weight on it. What we're looking at on this guy is... Two and three quarter for the cutting edge on the Kershaw Cryo. And then over here, we got the San Renmu. Um, 70-10 on this guy, and we have about the same size cutting edge on the San Renmu, and let's just see, the same size cutting edge on the Spyderco Ambitious. And on the Smith and Wesson, it's 
we are looking at a little a little under three and a half. <clears throat> but for hardcore tasks days, I know I'm gonna be going through more cardboard than you will ever know. If I need, I know I'm gonna need a pry bar. And I know I'm gonna need, well, I guess not, well, yeah, a pry bar. But if I need a knife that is going to need to be built like a tank, I'm going to be grabbing one of these four knives out of my collection. Um, just because these ones I personally know I can use outside the realm of a normal pocket knife. I know that these can absolutely take the abuse. I mean, on some of these, you can just see the wear and tear on the blade. I mean, just heavily used knives. But, uh, yeah, the, the only one I'd be maybe iffy is, is the, the pivot on this one. Because this one doesn't, does have nylon washers. But... Locally, it's a $15 knife on the webs. I'm pretty sure you could find them for closer to 10. So again, it's disposable. Do what you want. Um, but this knife is just beastly. I mean, it's just gnarly. Um, like if you just look at how thick this, well, the liners are on this thing. I almost said scales. And then you have the, the bronze bushings on it. So you know you can't, destroy the the washers on there and again the ganzo you know the same thing except for instead this one's a lot lighter because even though like it's an original video instead of how this one is stainless this guy's aluminum so you get a little more lightweight there and again you get the super chunky super thick <clears throat> liners on this guy too i mean this thing is just just as hardcore um the only thing is you don't have the, the over travel bar and again i know a lot of you guys own the tenacious i know a lot of you guys own the ambitious and this whole line of spider co so i know you guys also know how hardcore this knife is um, I don't have to tell you. So, again, super lightweight because we have skeletonized liners. We have amazing jimping on the thumb ramp. We have amazing slicing capabilities because the full flat grind. I threw the zip tie on there so I could have the Emerson Wave type deal on there. So, you know, when you pull it out of the pocket, it just grabs the pants and goes. And, ah, that is such an amazing sound. I love opening the this knife it's so authoritative when when you when you op when you flick it open that one not so much you, you see what i mean and the kershaw the speed of it i mean it almost yanks it out of your hand and but again you don't have that authoritative thwack of the spider co this one had, i feel like is the bastard child you know like i kind of feel like I don't know why this guy is here, but it is pretty hardcore. It is pretty durable. Um, it just doesn't get me as excited as these other three knives. I mean, for looks, I just love these other three. Um, this one, like I said, I do love the looks of it, but it just, I don't know, it just doesn't have the heft and the authority of these guys, in my opinion. Um, and yeah, so I was just... Uh, so the only big comparison is weight and handle size because if you look from the video i don't know if you can see it at this angle but all three knives have the same length in blades um let's 
so if we shit lost you guys but if we look this way we see that they're the exact same size get out here flash i don't want to fucking see you um the only difference we really have are in handle stock and that's another thing that uh kind of threw me off with the kershaw too is this little guy here isn't the most ergonomic the pinky just kind of hangs out and doesn't really really fill out and again the smith and wesson kind of feels like an oddball because he's got a little bit longer of a blade um almost a full half inch but uh yeah but uh yeah i feel like in all reality we can take these two guys away and i feel like the real head to head the real comparison are these two guys right here because i feel like these are the ones you guys are teetering about I feel like a lot of you guys, because I don't own the Tenacious, I really like the size of the Ambitious. This uh, two and three quarters right in my sweet spot, maybe around the three inch. But um, I love this size for EDC, um, for everyday tasks. The other thing in the Cryo, to me, is this hollow grind is really deep. I mean, this, this is a chunky blade. This is a really thick, nasty guy. Um... And if it it would have probably would have been nicer if it was a little further back, but it's a uh, it's a little on the shallow side with a really deep groove. So I notice in some tasks, um, sub up, but <laughs> in some tasks it doesn't slice the absolute best. Even though the knife is pretty sharp, I wouldn't say sharp as shit, but it's decently sharp out of box. It's not bad. It'll get the job done. Um, but yeah, in what I've noticed, uh, yeah, it, 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 the thickness of it kind of gives it a hard time. And right up here on the tip, it kind of hangs up on mine. But again, I think that's just because I may need to touch up the blade. This guy, I just love this guy. So I heat anodized the pocket clip, um, on the stove top. I just heated it up and put it back on so like i can get a, a little bit of color out of it a little bit of see there's little hints of blues and purples mostly brown um just because i didn't like the the big chrome pocket clip i get it right it, it was supposed to be a part of it so you got the the chrome on black chrome on black chrome on black right but uh i would have liked a black pocket clip so i just i guess anodized it myself um and i feel like it turned out all right uh again i like the the tip up carry so i put a lanyard on a lot of my knives um and the pivots are beastly on these guys i mean the lockup's about the same on both 50 percent 50 percent um this one you know big thick gnarly scales on the ins or sorry liners um and I tell you, this is a hard head-to-head. -head. Uh, you guys tell me, which one do you think wins? Which do you like? Which one's better? Which do you prefer over the other? Because in my mind, I can't, I can't choose. Aesthetically, I love both. Um, the Spyderco was a little bit of an acquired taste for me. Like, when I, when I first saw these lines, I thought they were ugly as shit. You know, with the, with the leaf style blade the thumb ramp i thought i thought oh god that's just a hideous knife but once i got it in hand and felt the smoothness of it and how fast this thing opens especially with that uh those bronze bushings and again that authoritative swack i don't know i guess this is kind of hardcore yin and yang here right with the g10 and the steel liners um, but yeah, so tell me what you guys think. Which one's the better knife? Are they on par? Is, do you prefer one over the other? Or are they just both just as amazing? Alright guys, this is Davis, Dave Fett, signing out.